Jared, it's all yours. Thank you. Hello, hello. I'm Jared. I'm an engineer on the Pulp team. And today I'll be giving a little presentation about the current state of domains in Pulp. Um, so this presentation is going to be mainly like an update on our current progress with domains. And when we talk about mainly what we've added to domains this past year, and then also what we plan to keep adding for the upcoming uh, patches. Um, and then at the end, I have a little bit of discussion um, about any feedback, any suggestions. Um, but at any point in time, feel free to interrupt me, ask questions, or add any input that you think would be helpful. But first, a little quick recap on what domains are. They're our, our multi-tenancy multi tool that allows users to have their own siloed objects within their own namespace. Um, some key features is that it allows you to have all of your artifacts in your own storage backing. So you can bring your own storage backing and then store all your artifacts and your content in your own um, backend and not have it be shared with anybody else's uh, content. And another key part is that enabling domains requires all the plugins that you use to have domain support. And so I'll talk about a little bit about that later. And um, these are some links to docs about domains and then a presentation I gave I think two years ago about how we implement domains on the technical side. But I won't go over that today. So that's domains. Um, this past year, we've been adding more support for more plugins for domains. And so We've added two new uh, plugin support, Pulp OS Tree within version 2.3. This was added, I think, back in February. And then Pulp Python for 3.12. This was added back in June. And so now um, we have five plugins that have domain support. Pulp File, which is included inside of Pulp 4 automatically. Pulp RPM, which uh, last year Grant gave a nice talk at PulpCon talking about adding support domain support to Pulp RPM, and then Pulp Gem, which is one of our newer plugins that we um, revitalized last year. We brought it up to the spec and added domain support automatically. Uh, another big feature that we added this year is this new migrate endpoint. So as of Pulp Core 361, you can now migrate your artifacts in your domain from one backend storage to another. And so here's the example post call. Um, it is a call to domains that migrate and then with your domain name in the URL. And so this example, you're in the test domain and you're going to migrate your backend to this new storage backend and then with these new settings. And what this does is it takes your domain, puts it in a read only state, and then it starts moving the artifacts from your old backend that the domain is currently using and starts populating them into your new domain that you specify in the call. And then after it's done moving all these uh, artifacts, it then updates your domain's store settings to the new one. So some key notes is that it doesn't delete the old uh, artifacts in your old storage art storage backend um, since the user is the one who supplied the storage backend. I think they're able to um, handle that on your own. We don't want to touch that. Also, because it puts the, the domain into a read-only state, we need the domain to still be, the storage backend artifacts to still be there while we're migrating all the artifacts, because there could be a lot of artifacts. Um, second thing is that, like I said, it puts the domain in a read-only state, which means that you can't add or do any syncs or delete any content while you're running this task, but users can still download content um, that are already present in the system. And so this means you can run these tasks in the background while your domain is still running. You don't have to take down pulp. So this is really helpful if you make sure you have zero downtime while uh, migrating. And then I guess the third thing is this technically doesn't work on the default domain. 
And so that's a one limitation. Any other domain, it works fine. But the default domain, we don't have support for it yet. So that's the, uh, the big new feature that we add in domains. I'm going to talk a little about what we have planned for domains. Currently, out of the nine or 10 plugins that we have support for in our OCI images, four of them don't have domain support. These four are on the list. And currently, one of them, Pulp Container, is being planned to have domain support. Well, I'm personally working on it, and I hope to have it finished before the year's over. We'll see if I can get to it since December is a shortened month. <laughs> um, but our goal is to hopefully eventually have all of our plugins that we support in our OSI images um, have domain support. Um, a little bit of a preview for Grant's talk, next talk about Pulp 4, but that might be a requirement that we have. Um, we also have a, a wish list of items that I think domains would be really great to support, but I'm not so sure um, how quickly we'll be able to add these. So if you didn't know, Pulp can um, support file storage backends. And our big ones that we support are AWS and Azure, but we actually also have support for Google. Um, now the big thing is that we don't actually test the Google support in our own infrastructure, in our own CI. And so we make no guarantees that it'll actually work, but it is there in the code. And so you could try it out if you wanted to. But it currently, domains doesn't support Google. Um, and so there would be a bit more work that would need done to have domains be able to support it. But since you can use it um, with domains not enabled, I think it would be good parity to have domains also support it. Uh, second item on our wish list is making domain admin permissions um, better making them be able to do more, more stuff, make it easier for admins to manage the domain. Um, in yesterday's presentation by uh, Brian about our current experience running services, they use domains. And he talked a little bit about how they have a special admin permission um, RBAC settings to make it so that their admins can be have their own permissions on um, domains easily. And this is a custom code that we run in our services. And it would probably be helpful to actually bring some of that custom code into a way, into Pulp Core, that makes sense for other users uh, of domains. And then finally, another thing that Brian talked about um, in his presentation last yesterday is that currently the settings for domain backend storages are all stored in the database. And they're stored encryptedly. But a lot of users who would be um, want to use this multi-tenancy would also want their secrets for their backend storage to be stored in their own vaults or in their own token services. And so there would be there's a need for Pulp to be able to go and grab these secrets um, and then use that for the storage backend instead of storing them themselves. Um, so that would be a good integration to have. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, who are, who's currently using domains. Uh, and this is from our analytics site. So we have analytics. It's a background task that gets run, I think, once a day for long-running systems. And then we can aggregate and look at them. So I took these um, statistics yesterday. And as you can see, there are the majority of systems have no domains, which means that they don't run with domains enabled. And then there are two systems that have domains. And I have a feeling these two systems are our systems that we run on services on console.redhelp.com. This one's probably the main production one, and this one's probably the staging environment. Now, there are two reasons, I think, for these numbers. One, like I said earlier, you can't enable domains unless all the plugins support domains. And I have a feeling 
the majority of the people that are showing up in these in this data are people who are using our OCI images or who are using the operator, which also use our OCI images. And those images contain all of the plugins that we support, but not all of those plugins support domains. And so they can't turn on domains. And so you would have to use a custom install like our services do in order to be able to turn on this feature. And then the second thing is that I think there's probably not enough um, advertising for this feature, or maybe there's some, some features that are still lacking from domains that would make it like a real good use. Um, and so that's one of the parts of this um, presentation that I wanted to give is to ask for feedback about what else is missing from domains so that we can get more people using it. So I guess um, at the end of my presentation now, I'm going to open it up to Q&A or any feedback. Oh, and here's some uh, links. Let me paste the uh, slides in the chat. Oh yeah, I put a lot of links in my presentation for other resources. But yeah, um, that's in my slides. So open up the floor. Does anybody have any um, questions? Any feedback? Um, I guess this kind of continues off from what was also discussed yesterday, uh, but like, are there any plans on your end to get the feature into the remaining plugins that don't have it? Because, well, with the whole requirement, you need all plugins on your instance to support it, to enable it, that probably is a big limitation, I guess. Uh, yes, I agree with that. Um, not to spoil Grant's presentation, but we do have plans to add support to all the plugins. Um, and so there are, after pull container, which hopefully I can get down this here, there's three left. Uh, pull maven will probably be the easiest one to implement. And then between pull dev and pull ansible, probably about the same amount of work. Pulp container is definitely the most complicated one out of this list. And so I guess you could say I'm doing in reverse complexity order. But if anyone helps contribute, I'll gladly review. Oh, yes, that's a good link, Grant. Last year, Grant gave a presentation at PulpCon about domainizing pulp RPM. So that has to be a good example to go through. We also have our docs, our dev docs about the steps you need to take to add domain support to your plugin. And so you can also follow this. I currently looked at this uh, following my own steps that I wrote for adding support to pull container. So should still be up to date. Yes. Um, yeah, hey. uh, you talked about putting credentials into a vault. I just want to mention we have credentials in other places too. Our, uh, remotes is the only one that comes to my mind that immediately, but... And the domain itself, yeah. No, I mean, remote, the domains have credentials, obviously, for their storage backend, but we also have, like, credentials for remotes when you need to sync from a server that needs authentication, for example. <clears throat> and so I hope that this vault thing is not not only for domains at this point, if it can be architected in a nice way. Yeah, that would be a good idea. I think part of the reason why that's a nice to have as opposed to we're going to do that right away is 
just figuring out the details of exactly how to talk to whatever key store or vault you happen to bring along um, is always going to be the exciting part of that, I think. Could be wrong. Yeah, it's quite possible once we support one vault, we'll get requests for a million more vaults. Yep. Sure, can you give us a feel for just very ballpark? You're working on pulp container and domainizing it now. Mm -hmm. About how many of your of your days do you estimate that that's going to take? Just to, I'm not looking for obviously not like to the hour, but just to the week. Uh, how much time does that take? Um, for pulp container, it's a bit hard, but probably taking at least two weeks because there's a lot of little areas in pull container that mm -hmm. you need to keep track of. So and then obviously reviewing it will take a significant amount of time as well. So <laughs> yeah, Lubash's comment weeks, in yeah. chat two weeks to a year. Yeah. Um, Could be possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the hard part, as I recall from RPM, and admittedly it's been over a year now, so this is resurrecting very old neurons. There's a lot of, if you're just uh, subclassing out of uh, standard objects in pulp core um, and not doing a lot of work, it's really easy. Pulp Maven should be very straightforward. If you have a lot of a lot of special casing, especially around queries, uh, like RPM has its own uh, sync stage, for example. Um, making a lot of decisions, then it gets a lot more tedious. Um, and my observation is if you're working on it full time, it goes a lot faster than if you're trying to do it while you're juggling three other things at the same time. Yeah, I would agree with that assessment. Very cool. Other questions, folks? Going once, going twice, going three times. All right. Jared, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to end this recording. Hang on.